Hi, hello students. Welcome to SPV Education World. Together we create a better world. Today we're going to see a next class in geography. We're going to see regarding our earthquake classes, my dear friends. Previous classes, if you need, just kindly watch our playlist so that you get clear idea of the topics that you are going to watch in geography and several other courses that has been provided by me, SP Rajan. So kindly subscribe and watch the playlist because uh, it is in multiple languages, so you just don't get confused. Okay, so before seeing earthquake, I suggest you watch earthquake waves or seismic waves p waves s waves those ha classes has been taken previously kindly watch that class and come to this class it will be much more beneficial for you to understand the topic that we're gonna take in earthquake okay my dear friends earthquake means what everybody would have uh, remember this as a great disaster uh, now and then we'll be uh, hearing about it and most frequently means and uh, recently we had seen in nepal earthquake now we shall see here as usual we will start our class with a good motivational quote my dear friend yeah universal law says this, thoughts become things remember one thing whatever the thoughts you have the negative or positive uh, whatever the perceptions and mind you have so your thoughts must be organized in a systematic manner to make your day beautiful and also your life to be beautiful because of having a negative thoughts you'll be stuck over there itself and you'll be not able to enjoy the beauty of life so kindly organize your thoughts in a positive way whatever the situation it comes just ignore the negative things nothing can be beneficial with that just keep your thoughts to be a positive so that you that is the thing that will bring you beauty in life okay my dear friends we shall go on now we shall see here earthquake before earthquake let me tell you what are all the topics that we're gonna See in earthquake, we will see the how earthquake originates and what are all the terms present in it and what is the process that happens in earthquake and types of earthquakes that has been happening in recent time on recent past. Also, how we measure this earthquake and also how earthquakes is happening in India and what are all the zones that we see earthquakes in India. And also there are many facts and many things you need to know in this earthquakes topics, my dear friends. Okay. Hope you'll have fun in learning here now we shall see here how the earthquake is originated what is earthquake first thing nothing my dear friends do you have a phone if you have a phone in a vibrated mode and keep it in your pocket what does it happens it just vibrates it shakes but the small phone of a handy size if it vibrates it shake you like anything you'll be vibrating like anything if a small phone makes you that much uncomfortable then the whole earth how much big it is as large as it is holding billions of population so if if it starts shaking or vibrating what does that happen that is called as earthquake as usual many people are there and we are having a modernized culture and modernized building everything as usual if earth shakes obviously the surface of the earth where all these living are there, there is a damage is happening. So that we are thinking it as a disaster. Okay, my dear friends, the shaking and vibration of the earth is just called as earthquake. And also it releases energy. As usual, if you see somewhere a bomb blast, a normal deep hourly comes means you'll be using a bombs to blast. If you are closer enough to bombs that you blast, you'll be feeling that, uh, that shaking of the earth or vibrations. So it is not a big thing, but it is a small scale. The similar to that, if it is happening in a large scale, which means at thousands or lakhs of bombs blasted at once, it means you can assume how much dangerous or how much vibration that it can create on the earth surface. And it releases a large amount, a huge amount of energy. And also it creates a waves to travel in all direction. As usual, it originates at one place and it keeps on moving in a different places. There are different uh, phenomena, and also we can see everything else. It is due to the underground moment of earth is called as earthquake. And also in a fault line, you will know everything in detail now, my dear friend, because the earth is not a whole a single plate it is uh, divided into multiple multiple plates and inside the earth the, where does this earthquake starts is called as fault line there will be a line where the earthquake originates and also due to the shaking of the earth that is called as a fault line and also due to the volcanic activity uh, activity also we will face this earthquakes now we shall see here how does what does that happen in this process as usual the earth is a shaking means or it vibrating means in the fault plane the rocks will be tend to move in opposite directions as usual we had a 
how the energy started in, in this whole world there are two stones crashed to each other and the fire has brought out the, the fire is the form of energy that nowadays we are using it is invented in similar way if it is happening between small stones it's nothing big but inside the earth huge rock huge pressure everything all together moves and creates the uncomfortability and the rock strata keeps on moving that creates a blocks and a high amount of friction will be created and also energy will be created so abruptly one surface slides so the other surface creating and releasing the energy these energy waves are called as the earthquake waves or seismic waves they vibrate in all the directions that we see so when these uh, vibrations or waves reach the surface the whatever the buildings trees roads infrastructure whatever present on the earth surface just vibrate themselves and also crack and fall to the ground you can see how it is happening and these things let me show you the uh, fault line and how this earthquake starts here you can see earthquake source is somewhere beneath the earth where these uh, vibrations of fault lines see here the fault line means that there are two plates which means are two different surfaces they are being a moving so because the plane it is moving is called as fault plane and the earthquake source is called as uh, we can see it as a focus and i'll see in further uh, next slide and now from that fault line or from the source of earthquake this seismic waves moves when this seismic waves moves on they vibrate the earth surface obviously the surface particles everything start collapsing and now let me tell you what are all the seismic waves as usual we know that p and s waves are body waves and love waves and rally waves are the surface waves now from the source or focus the p waves originate after that the secondary waves s waves originate when they reach the surface they turn into rally and love waves which means surface waves these surface waves are which have which create a greater hazard because the surface is where we are living so it creates a greater damage to us and our living if you need to know about p waves s waves shadow regions and how it is moving everything you need to know you just watch our previous video on the seismic waves so that one i took this class previously and now i'm taking on earthquake so you'll be having a cl greater clarity okay now we shall go on the terms that are used in the formation of the earthquake which means where does the earthquake originate and the main points about an important terms that we must know during the earthquake focus and hypocenter let me tell you this image provides you the clear idea of what we're gonna see the terms here the point where here you can see the focus red color dot i had been mentioning here the point where the earthquake originates is called as focus or hypocenter whatever the meaning both are the same focus means also the same thing and hypocenter means also means also the same thing never get confused but from the, here you can find the earthquake starts the rupture starts and here the line we can, between the two blades this line is called as fault line because that fault arises due to, along this line and next here epicenter from the focus the closest point on the surface of the earth where the high intensity of the earthquake can be felt is called as epicenter you can see here from the focus the nearest surface of the earth is called as the epicenter and also here is the where the first waves can be experienced and next you can see here in this image also many things you can find here this is the rupture because of the changes in the fault line and also between the two plates of the earth surface the upper which means upper plate is called as hanging wall and the downward plate is called foot wall hanging wall arises above the foot wall so now we can see how it is happening and next how do we measure this earthquake there are two things we measure the magnitude of earthquake uh, it is through seismic waves we measure it it is a quantitative measure of this earthquake here the magnitude how much richter scale is measured through the magnitude of earthquake and also intensity is what severity of earthquake both has a little difference my dear friend magnitude means you measure how much it is how much energy is based on the energies and vibrations we calculate this quantitative measure but intensity is qualitative which means we measure how much damage based on that damage we measure the intensity of the 
earthquake and also here we can see high intensity is located in mostly near the epicenter from the epicenter when you when we move away from the epicenter the intensity slowly lowers down let me show you the magnitude of the earthquake here it is a richter richter okay richter scale that we measure the magnitudes okay let me show here if it is 0 to 2 richter scales then richter scale yeah h will be silent 0 to 2 richter scale no nothing is felt by any humans and also 2 to 3 richter scale it is felt literally little by people and also if it is 3 to 4 richter scale ceiling swinging everything just keep on moving and after 4 to 5 richter scale we can find the wall started cracking if it is uh, denoted up to 5 to 6 richter scale then obviously the furniture that are in our house also start moving if it is more above the 6 to 7 richter scale the some buildings started collapsing obviously and if it is 7 to 8 richter scale uh, many buildings started destroying itself and next if it is above the 8 richter scale see here 7 to 8 means few buildings collapse few stay strong because of their infrastructural capability but if it rises above the 8 richter scale all the bridges roads transport every infrastructure that you see today everything everything comes to the ground if it is above the 8 richter scale so it is a severe earthquake and also there is up to 10 richter scales 1 to 10 richter scales but we have a highest intensity to be found highest magnitude to be found is up to 8 and 9 only never we felt 10 because it will be a super earthquake maybe in future there is any possibility we can wait and watch okay my dear friend we shall see here now what are all the types of earthquake earthquake means based on their origin or based on their influence it will be divided further into different formats now we shall see here a tectonic earthquakes as usual whenever we are seeing a plate tectonics and also continental drift theory will be clearly understanding about how the earth is divided into multiple plates and movement of the each plates so because of those plates the movement of the, those plates there is a fault plane created and the sliding of rocks one over the each other obviously we know my dear friend if both plates are co coinciding or colliding with each other there will be a rupture created so the sliding of rocks takes place so the tectonic earthquakes happens and next if you come to the volcanic earthquakes here you can know the volcanic activity how it burst with a lava coming out from these volcanoes and this leads to the different earthquake activities also whenever you see volcano and earthquake they, these both have a correlation or interlinks because the tectonic plates will provide you the knowledge about it whenever i am taking class about tectonic plates you will, you will be understanding much more even after this next slide i'll be showing everything in clear for you next we can see here collapse of earthquake see here from here we'll be seeing more man really man-made human-made my dear friend or my anthropogenic we can see it or human induced earthquake we can see like that here intensity in mining intense mining nowadays we are intensely mining everything and taking whatever present in earth and looting everything else so obviously there will be a collapse of earth surface or earth interior that things create a collapse earthquakes and also mining activities and next and nuclear devices and nuclear explosions that are conducted underneath the earth those things also can create a explosion types of earthquakes and next there is a new thing called as the reservoir induced earthquakes which means reservoir is a huge amount of water stored at one place and it is also a creation of artificial manner it is not a natural phenomena here reservoirs we create it artificial so obviously whatever the crea we create artificially the pressure variations will be there which means the pressure will be mounted somewhere uh, it will be changing from one place to other obviously the water penetration many things lead to the creation of reservoir induced earthquake also there is a phenomenon of tidal earthquake also but this is not much more given here but i will be showing in slides my dear friend now you understood what are the things are different types of earthquakes do you want to watch what are all the earthquakes in clear so that here in geography whatever you are learning just theory doesn't help you my dear friend we need an image view so that a knowledge you can get and understand here the whole earth is divided into different plates seven major plates you can see here pacific plate north american plate south american plates african plate eurasian plate and australian plate and then you can see here indo-australian plate and also here you can see antarctic plate 
there are small plates also you must be these things you must be compulsorily remembering for the like, exam whatever you are preparing nasca plate cocos plate caribbean plate arabian plate and also indian plate and filipino plates these plates you can see now scotia plate which is close to antarctica you must remember the locations and also importance these are the division of the plates in the earth so obviously earth is not a single sheet of wrap it is it subdivided into different number of plates obviously if you are having different number of plates they move each other in different directions so whenever they keep moving there will be a rupture rock movements so obviously there is a possibility of earthquake so if you want to know the earthquake zones mostly the natural earthquake zones will be lying between the border or alliance of these plates which means when the both plates join or divide there you can find more earthquake zones now let me tell you a different things you need to remember my dear friend the earth you can see before telling this let me tell you okay i'll tell this only my dear friend because here if you see here if two plates are moving away from each other that it is called as a divergent plates if two plates are moving towards each other which means one over right over the other then it is called as a convergent boundary here below i am mentioning you can observe here and also if two plates cross each other in a sidewise it is called as a transformation transform boundary or transformation boundary here you must also observe clearly this image gives you a much more detail my dear friend here the mountains how it is indicated and also volcanoes how it is indicated and also here you can see the plate movement here they had given a plate movement obviously from now you must know every detail in close this is much more important you can see here friend here wherever you can find this a divergent plates you can see this these are all the divergent plates mostly in a atlantic which means mid atlantic ridge we call it as and also in oceans we can see mostly the divergent plates and only here in africa you can find a divergent plates and the movement of the plates and now we can see the convergent plates kindly observe the convergent plates i'm showing near north american plate then it comes to south american plates and next you can see here in africa and also mostly north of africa mediterranean sea next it comes to india and also then in and also mostly high amount of is found in this pacific region now you understand where are all these different types of plate boundaries and if you need to know transfer boundary you can observe it in california and those zones and next now you have an idea now let me tell you one thing my dear friend here where are all these high amount of mountains symbols and volcanoes are located wherever you see this convergent plate you can observe here convergent plate wherever you observe this convergent plate there you can observe most indications of this volcanoes and mountains so obviously this gives a clear idea because in future class that is more important so that i'm making here this topic to be bit slower to understand because earthquakes and also mountains and also volcanoes all the three are naturally naturally happening phenomena where it is mostly in convergent and plate boundaries other plate boundaries means there are also divergent plate boundary there also you can find these earthquakes and these things but it is in a lower level you can find volcanoes also you can find mountains mountains also but these are inside the ocean so that it is not much more visible to you and also we don't have any uh, more detailed map for that okay friend now you understand where are all these mountains rise volcanoes rise and also earthquake so all these zones are mostly in a plate boundaries now based on the plate boundaries what does that happen see here we can see here it is a divergent boundary what it happen if it is a divergent boundary one plate moves away from the other so if it is moving away from the other the lava will be slowly moving up and also the earthquake also we can find only little earthquakes which means a slip here you can see a dip slip you can see here like this of earthquake can be happening fault line will be happening and next if you come here convergent boundary one uh, one plate overrides over the other so both plates move, moving towards each other so one plate rises over the other so you can he see here what type of earthquake happens or fault line happens and next you can see here the transformation boundary means both are moving in a sideways two slides over each other 
so that time how does the earthquake arises due to the fault line this is the natural phenomena of the earthquakes that is happening and also how it is happening in the in the plate boundaries you can observe and clearly understand when we are seeing about the plate tectonics we'll be having this in a detail but if this is a starting class so you must be having a little more idea my friend next we can see here next type of volcano not volcano next type of earthquake that is volcanic type of earthquake what does that happen as usual you can see here the volcano is a magma present beneath the earth it has a huge thrust and energy which pushes its molten magma upwards and reach the vent and burst through as a volcano but on the way it creates a huge pressure and cracks and all the uh, stones and rocks present over there they hit over each other so obviously it burst with an indication of earthquake so obviously before a volcano and after a volcano you can experience as a earthquake and also earthquakes are the good indications of the volcanic activity also because if you are finding continuously earthquakes closer to volcanic active volcanic active mountains then obviously there is gonna be a great burst of volcano so this is a good indication so this is also called as a volcanic induced earthquake and next we can see here human induced our humans are not even silent at any moment my dear friend we keep on digging our earth and extracting everything that is available to us and we just manipulate with our nature so obviously we are the more first victim for this mistakes done by us and here if you come here hydrogen hydrocarbon storage you can see here it is also underneath the earth shale gas ex exploitation you use the technicals fracking and obviously we crack the earth and take the gases presented so there is a chance of collapse of the earth so obviously earth is maintaining a common pressure all over the surface so obviously when we are altering its beneath the earth so obviously we are creating the change in its pressure activity so obviously the earth starts triggering itself to shake so that is what we experience the human induced earthquake and one more activity is called as a geothermal energy exploitations mining operation which is a serious thing we are doing to the earth and also carbon sequestration which means a co2 carbon dioxide sequestration means means the atmospheric carbon dioxide we take it and sequestrate underneath the earth and next one of the important thing is dams when we are constructing the dam we block the water and store in a huge amount so whenever storing a huge amount of water there it creates a pressure so obviously and also the water penetrates beneath the earth so it creates a change in the pressure activity on the earth surface and also rock movements and these things so obviously it is the reason we are having earth cracks due to dam induced and it is also mostly famous in maharashtra koina dam that thing also i'll be showing my dear friends now we shall move on and based on human activities how much earthquakes are happening see here anthropogenic earthquakes which means human induced earthquakes which activity is producing high amount of earthquakes we can see here mining activities and next you can see here gen geothermal water reservoirs and also next thing is uh, oil and gas extraction these are all the main concept main four concepts which are creating the high amount of earthquakes and are also there are much more activities like waste fluid disposal research activities deep penetration bombs nuclear explosions fracking wastewater unspecified oil and gas and next construction activities coal bed methane everything can induce your earthquake here even you can see here groundwater extraction is also one of the reason where we can experience the earthquake these are all the ways our humans are inducing the earthquakes you can just remember if it is at either asked in exam you can uh, write it sequentially which means uh, which type is high amount of earthquake possibility due to human induced but mostly they don't ask just ignore but you must be learning now you can see here tidal earthquake tidal earthquake means what if earth is at center and due to the gravitation pull of the earth and sun there is a chance of triggering the earthquake because obviously if the gravitation is pulling at that moment these plates have a possibility of moving so higher possibility of fault creation and accelerating the moment so along the fault there is a possibility of accelerating the earthquake or fault line movement so it is also called as tidal earthquakes and this is not in a higher scale my dear friend this is only in a minute scale next we can see here human induced earthquakes where are all they are 
noted and which means um, notedly where are all this happening and we can see here mostly oil and gas shale gas mining activities dams water wastewater geothermal energy others and now let me locate you in india we can see here kohina reservoir which is present in maharashtra which is the best example of a reservoir induced earthquake which we had felt in 1967 and recent earthquake in china means Zhangzi province you can see here Sinchuan province I think so yeah there is an earthquake which is a higher in intensity and more than I think 60,000 people have died this is one of the greater uh, which means worse activity and next in Australia you can see here geothermal energy copper basin in 2003 it is also a, one of the human induced earthquake and next in Newcastle in Australia mining activity Switzerland due to geothermal activ activity in 2006 and natural gas extraction in 2004 in Germany and also then wastewater injection in Oklahoma, USA 2011. Why I am saying these things? Is that important for your exam? Is it is important for your knowledge, my dear friends. But this coina is an important thing because they may ask which type of earthquake is happening and it is human induced or what. So coina is much more important. Other things you just need to know not much important but remember one thing after 2000 only we are feeling more earthquakes due to human induced activities so in future we can experience much more human induced earthquakes my dear friend okay now we shall move on if earthquake is happening before the earthquake and after the earthquake there is a shocks which means as usual if you hear any echo how does that you can hear hello 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 so the first voice will be higher then it be slowly going down 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 that is called as after shocks see here my dear friends here you can see main shock means the highest level of noted earthquake is called as which means highest magnitude of noted earthquake is called as main shock and the previous shocks which means see here friend the earthquake doesn't happen at only once eight and then stop it will be having a minute earthquakes two three four richter scale and these things it will be a regular phenomena but thing is that it doesn't create any damage so we just ignore that so the four shocks means before that main shock if we are having a pre-shocks it is called as a four shocks means in earthquake and also after that main shock if you are having minute earthquakes you can call it as after shocks and this graph shows you the magnitude how it is increasing and how it is decreasing towards the further from the main shock okay my difference you can see here also here eight richter scale you had allocated m um, earthquake after that we have a many minute earthquakes of, of five and four and three richter scale it goes on decreasing slowly in a in a manner we can find here when a time delay it is goes on slowly decreasing next we can see here based on the depth of the focus you know what is focus my dear friend yes you know so based on the depth of the focus you can further divide a, uh, divide the earthquake into shallow focus and deep focus earthquakes if it is a deeper now you, let me show you image see here if one layer subducts under the other layer so obviously the focus varies for the earthquake so here if it is less than 70 kilometers it is called as a shallow focus remember this shallow focus means the depth less than 70 kilometers so the focus length is less than 70 kilometers and if the focus depth or focal depth is 70 to 300 kilometers it is called as a mid focus or in intermediate depth earthquakes and deep focus earthquakes means it will be greater than 300 kilometers which means 300 to 700 kilometers mostly it will be subducted in the magnetic and uh, mantles asthenosphere and it breaks down here a huge amount of compression happens and most of this slab will be molten so due to that this earthquakes happen my difference it is also called as a deep focus earthquakes now you got an idea of a shallow deep on shallow focus and deep focus earthquakes now we can come here yeah how do we measure the earthquake we measure it with a call uh, device called a seismograph and it is also measuring is called a seismogram now we know that seismo seismicity means study of earthquakes and everything we had seen in a previous uh, class also where we see the p waves s waves everything and we measure the magnitude and intensity of the earthquakes based on the shock here magnitude means as i said we measure it in a richter scale and also amount of seismic energy released 
See here, Richter scale means it is a magnitude based on the amount of energy released. We may show that, and it is a logarithmic scale of zero to ten. Remember this, zero to ten scale. But mostly we have recorded only eight, and highest ever earthquake recorded is nine point five. Till now, I think it is in Chile. I think so, my dear friend. And next, intensity. Intensity is a uh, based on a severity, severity, which means visible damage. Based on visible damage, we measure that it as a intensity scale. It is measured through modified Maselli intensity scale. It is measured through modified Maselli intensity scale, my dear friend. And now intensity scale varies from one to twelve. In your exams, they can ask how this magnitude scale measured and also intensity scale measured. They can ask how it is measured and other things. The scale limit can also be asked. The magnitude scale is zero to ten, but intensity scale is one to twelve. So the both things you must be remembering much more clear. Charles Richter and Benno Gutenberg are the two persons those who developed this magnitude scale. Okay, my dear friend. Hope you can understand. Now let me show you how this magnitude is measured because I had already uh, yeah magnitude I had already shown. I'll show you the intensity scale, my dear friend. You can see here a modified Mercelli scale is used to measure the intensity. Now one. One means it is only not even felt by anyone, and also two means it felt by less persons, and also mostly upper house and upper floors, and also three means I felt the windows and everything started vibrating, like a lightweight truck passing close to you, and four indicates in intensity scale that heavy truck is moving closer to you, and five means outdoors also felt and um, small instability will be there. And also six means felt by everyone. Furniture start moving, and also seven. You can see here damage of the buildings and everything starts. And also eight means that everything start collapsing, framing house, everything. And nine means it is a serious damage and destroying everything else. Ten means buildings, bridges, everything keep destroyed and collapsing. And eleven means rails bent. See here railway lines, everything pipelines, everything bent and damaged. And twelve means total damage. Everything, whatever you are seeing in this present day, everything, even trees fell and everything get damaged. That is called as intensity scale. So, based on the increasing intensity, you can find the damage. I hope they don't ask questions regarding this, but just remember, like a one, six, and twelve, because based on the damage scale, they may ask as a statement. So, okay, my dear friends, now let me say that. If you're reading earthquakes, there is a few words that you must be remembering so that I'm adding those words. Like earthquake swamps means what? What is earthquake swamps? See here, in a short period of time, which means a short span of time, at a specific area, huge amount of earthquakes attacks at a one place, which means 260 to 270 earthquakes attacking at a one place. This thing you can mostly find in San Francisco in America, I think. So yeah. There a huge amount of earthquakes at one place due to that because there is only a, we can see here one plate slides over the other and transform boundary is located there so we can find a number of earthquakes starting there because to know the vocabulary we must know this earthquake swamps means what at a short period specific area huge amount of earthquakes attacks and next we can see here earthquake storm means what what is earthquake storm. The same thing, my dear friends, at a fault line, a cluster of earthquakes strike a fault and also a huge amount of earthquakes is trigger and like a storm, you know, you, uh, you know how the storm looks like, like the storm, a high amount of earthquake attacks, it's called as a earthquake storm. Now you can see in this image where a huge amount of earthquakes attacking at a one particular location in a short span of time. So it creates the earthquake swamps. Next, effects of earthquake. Now let me tell you, my dear friend, this image provides you much more clarity and you know, much needed for you. I think it is that did not play for you. Yeah, yeah, now it plays. Yeah, my dear friend, now you can see here at some location in Japan, there is an earthquake. These are all ocean. So slowly, because of earthquake, the ocean also start vibrate. So when ocean vibrates, the waves rise high and high, and it reaches the shores. You can see here how does tsunami happens? Like a bucket of water. If you shake the bucket of water, it will not be stable like that. If ocean is not stable, the waves arise and subduct the all the places that are in the shore. This is one part of the effects of the earthquake, my dear friend. So this thing is much more important. See here, after earthquake, there is a tsunami possibility. And also mostly if the earthquake is happening underneath the 
oceans or sea then a tsunami is a higher possibility this image provides you how this tsunami starts and happening from the earthquake location which means epicenter it start if epicenter is located underneath the ocean so obviously this is how tsunami starts now let me tell you what are all the effects of earthquake also few things i must show you my dear friend yeah now instead of uh, loading there i just show from this side my dear friend here effects of earthquake what happens when an earthquake starts the ground starts shaking and here you can see here the ground is heavily damaged and also objects is in damage and here you can see car is been trampled under the buildings and next here earth rupture which means here you can see here earth how it is uh, the division of the surface and rupture is happening and next you can see here landslide landslide means if it is in a mountain regions the land will be sliding over and also will fill the roads and infrastructure activities along the path and next tsunami is as i shown earlier now no issues about that and next liquefaction subsidence and also related effects these are all the effects of the earthquake in this here you can find clear that the great uh, objects everything will be subsided under the underneath the earth and also here liquefaction is due to the work water movement and these things many strokes uh, stones and rocks will be missing over there and also sand volcano will be created which means a liquefied and liquefaction is one of the phenomena or effect due to the earthquake and also next thing is fires after earthquake we have effects of fire to be uh, created because of this earthquake activity and also the infrastructure damage here you can find the fires hope you understood these things my dear friends effects of earthquake now we shall move on to the next topic here the earthquake in india how does the earthquake is caused in india mostly natural earthquake caused in india due to the indian plate movement as usual i'll show that image my dear friend here indian plate collided with a eurasian plate so and also indian plate is moving every day every day which means not every day it is moving every day but per year it is moving around 45 mm which means around 5 cm approximately 5 cm it is moving per year yes my dear friend we are traveling on the indian plate so it is moving 5 cm every year next and also here see also here remember this rotation of the indian plate is anti clockwise direction anti clockwise direction why is it also we can see here when we are seeing the plate tectonics and next it is also a convergent plate indian plate converges with eurasian plate where a tibetan plate we can call it as and also india based on the earthquake activities it is divided into seismic zones or of a four seismic zone actually zone 1 is there but it has been removed recently my dear friend and now we shall see here what are all the four types of zones zone 4 is a low risk zone and also zone 3 is a moderate damage risk it is also found in andaman parts of kashmir and also western himalayas and zone 4 is a high damage risk it is found in delhi bihar indo gangetic plain and japan and next zone 5 is a high risk zone here in kashmir punjab certain locations and also himalaya and northeastern states and none of which this are all the place where you can find a high risk zones hope you have understood let me show you in clear where are all these zones so that you will be having an extra idea now you see the four zones observe this my dear friend and also mostly central india and here blue color image indicates zone 2 and south india mostly we are in zone 2 and 3 and next uh, zone 3 moderate risk you can see here yellow color image here this indicates a moderate risk and next we can see here zone 4 is a high risk zone in certain locations of gujarat and also maharashtra and next in a uh, north india you can experience this zone 4 next zone 5 is a high risk zone see here zone 4 and zone 5 is highly located in north india in a himalayan zone now you know where are all these zones and how it is affecting india and how it is creating a, a damage and also in india we are having more than 60 percentage of moderately risk or hazard zone seismic hazard damage possibilities in india my dear friend this is what and also here you can see bhuj is a place where we reached 2001 we had 2001 we had an earthquake it is located in gujarat my dear friend hope you know the earthquake locations and these things and also let me show you how this plate collide and creating the earthquake here you can see indian plate colliding with eurasian plate so obviously in this zone himalayan zone we are finding high seismic or earthquake risk places so this is where we are seeing and also here in northeast region also it is colliding so here we also we find the 
seismic activity to be more prone. Okay, friend, now let me show you based on the frequency and high damage. See here, on the highest frequency earthquake, I said that 9.5 something, it is measured in Chile. So in Chile is the highest earthquake we had uh, measured in 1960. And also how much trillions of energy released and what does that happen, we can see here. Next, Alaska, Japan are highest earthquake they had felt and also massive loss of life and damage will be there. And next, New Madrid is a place. And next, San Francisco in 1906. And here you can see Loma Preto, Calif, and Kobe, Japan, North Ringo Cliff, Long Island. These are all the important earthquakes that has been felt. And based on the Richter scale, you can just pass and watch this image so you can know and you can understand much more clarity of earthquakes. Hope you have a cl clear idea of the class now. And next, we can see here if a earth shakes, it is a earthquake. And now there is a twist. If moon shakes, what is it called? It is called as moon quack. What are all the reasons that a moon also to have a quack? Obviously, here means human induced earthquakes are there or a tectonic earthquakes are there, which are naturally made. But what are all the reasons that moon also to have a quake? So moon quake means it is felt more deeply in 700 kilometers below the moon. The reasons are maybe it's tidal activities, which means the moon is facing the Earth's gravitation and also sun gravitation. Both the gravitation pull the moon. So because of that, there is a tidal possibility of getting a moon quake. And also due to the meteorites impact, the vibrations can also be created and felt in a moon. Apollo 15 has measured our satellites which are landed on moon. They had measured this moon quacks, my dear friend. And also it is evident from that. And also one more thing is thermal quacks. Thermal quacks means certain locations on the moon is frigid on the crust, which means it cools down severely. So obviously it freezes like anything, deeper freeze and lunar nights. Suddenly the, it is exposed to the sunlight. It cracks and creates a thermal quacks. And next, a shallow moon quacks happens on the surface of the moon around 20 to 30 kilometers. It is mostly due to the deep freeze lunar nights only, my friend. You would have understood now a clear. And next is a word called ice quack. What is ice quack? In Antarctica regions also there is an earthquake. And also due to the ice is frozen for a long duration. Huge ice cover is, is located there. So there also we can feel the quack, which means there are seismographs has been are uh, noted there in the uh, our scientific research centers over us sorry antarctica so that is evident from that ice quakes has been happening there now let me see here moon quake means you know that it is gravitation of the sun and earth and next you can see here ice quakes how does that it happening and next let me tell you a few vocabularies that you would have never heard me different earthquake lights earthquake clouds what is earthquake lights See here, friend, whenever earthquake uh, is happening, there are a phenomena of a light shining on the sky. It is also like aurora and borealisis. Here you can see this image. Similar to the aurora and borealisis, there are earthquake lights. Why is it happening? It is due to the uh, earthquake. Piezoelectric materials has been emitted. And also the other reason can be that earthquakes can also uh, which means uh, distort the magnetic field of the earth so that we can feel these lights called as earthquake lights and next you can see here earthquake cloud earthquake cloud is a uh, indian innovation innovation my dear friend it is in chapter 32 of brihat samhita brihat samhita is written by the scholar varah Mira. why i said this is in ancient india this a uh, book is much more important so let me tell in interrelate it with geography so that we can and know the pride of our Indian old scientist. Varah Mihra wrote a Brihat Samhita. In that, in that he said that there is a signs of warning before earthquake. There is a clouds rising. It seems that shows the earthquake is coming. So before a week or so, the earthquake to arrive, there are clouds arise on the sky. It seems it is indications of this earthquake. There is no scientific evidence about it. Few science science and scientists believe in it you don't believe in it so it is not a perfect statement but if you are have ever facing this word so you must have an idea so i just explained it my dear friend and next you know our animals pet animals do they can predict our earthquake yes my dear friend do you know an incident a tsunami has created lakhs killed lakhs of people in chennai and also coastal regions of south india and also indonesia but there is an andaman 
there is a island in that island sentinels and this uh, tribal people will be living there their population is around less than 100 it seems but not even a one died why they are having a pet and they are also living their life in a primitive way which means how we had lived at 10000 years back they are living still now in the similar way and they followed their animal systems before tsunami there will be a earthquake waves to be felt or seismic waves to be felt whenever this animal felt them they just started moving to the upper which means at topper most place of the island like hilly terrain so these people also followed them and they were also in a safe zone so our animals are the most best indicators of the earthquake prediction even now here my dear friend such a scientific developments we are having but till now we can never predict the earthquake there are scientists try to predict but they have failed so there is no possibility of predicting earthquake or also we can't avoid the earthquake also but these animals are much more intelligent we still feel that they have only five senses we are much more intelligent than them we have domesticated them we are controlling them but the thing is that me my friends here these are much more intelligent and they can also feel the earthquake much more clearly here you can see here animals started running when the earth starts shaking so next you can see here these things and also cats are a good indications of the earthquake but still why the pet animals are dying due to the earthquake they ask because in cities we just keep tied up the dogs and animals so obviously they cannot run away so they they fall prey to this earthquake and also one more thing the animals which are living in burrows like rats snakes and also other animals which are living in burrows they start moving out and running away these are also the indications of this earthquake even in a movie in 2012 i think so the world ends that you can see how the earthquake is how the animals are first fly and indicate before the earthquake arises okay friends now what are all the safety measures that we must be taking when the earthquake arises i hope this is the final slide my dear friends so if you you had bad along with me now we can see here here earthquake what we should do if you are inside your house just a drop down cover your head move down to any uh, like a desk or table just move below the table or corners of your home if you are in a wheelchair and if you are a, if you are a elder person you cannot move you just hold your head and move which means uh, look downwards don't look uh, up so that it may hit with the floor okay next you can see here if you are sleeping or if you are having a pillow just hold the pillow over your head and get down to the uh, cot or bed which you are lying and also stay away from windows my dear friend and next and also if still the earth is shaking till that you stay inside the house under the table or don't panic or don't run and if a fire arises due to the earthquake just kindly use a fire extinguisher and set it down next if you are living in a coastal area kindly you just move to the below the table when the earthquake vi vibrations are you can feel it but after the earthquake you are on the shore which means a coastal region kindly move on to the hilly terrain which means uh, somewhere it is a high land area so that you can be saved from the tsunami and next you just move away from the buildings if you are outside the house or anything don't go and hide below any buildings or don't go near any buildings or electric poles these things kindly move away to the free space if you are on the road just lie down holding your head and so that till the shaking ends you just lie down and next if you are in a car you just move to the isolated locations away from these buildings and these things and also don't um, park your vehicle under any huge tree you park in an empty space and wait till the shakings end and also if you are in a hilly terrain kindly be aware of the boulders to be flown from the which means at top of the hills so this is all the these are all the precautionary activities that you must take during the earthquake activities why means in the exam they may also the precautionary activities also okay friends hope you had a good session now on earthquakes okay friends this is thank you for watching spv education world together we create a better world if you are not yet subscribed kindly subscribe my dear friends this is me sp rajan who is taking you classes in tamil telugu hindi english and also don't get confused my dear friends kindly watch our playlist and also
if you like our class kindly share with your friends so that they can also get knowledge and also they can also learn more in future i'll plan to come up with more initiative on more topics my dear friends and also if you like and if you want to crowdfund for our classes and also without economic support nothing can be created so if you want to support economically you can crowdfund through tez or paytm my dear friends okay friends those who are subscribed and supporting thanks for everyone signing off sp rajan bye take care